The iPhone 14 Pro Max is the most iterative update of the series in the past three years. That much we have established in the first impressions video. However, it does bring some key improvements in areas that some might consider very relevant. So who's it for and who should ignore it and wait for next year's model? Let's find out in this video. Apart from the larger camera sensors on the back and the new pill-shaped dynamic island on the front, you could easily mistake this phone for the iPhone 13 Pro Max or even the 12 Pro Max for that matter. So basically, there's not much to tell if you're familiar with either of those phones, apart from the dynamic island. Except one thing, as the camera lenses are growing in size each year, be mindful about protecting them. It's much easier to bump these on a surface when laying the phone flat than it was even with the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So make sure you invest in a quality case that offers a raised lip to prevent the camera lens rings from getting scratched. First party Apple cases offer good protection and so do options from Spigen and ESR. Watch my reviews of all these cases for the iPhone 14 series to choose what suits you best. Links in the description. Also, in terms of the size and weight of this device, it is as heavy and large as before. But I think we have already crossed that bridge. Small phones just don't cut it anymore. And proof of that is the demise of the mini series of iPhones this year. We're doing more and more of our connected world stuff on our phones. And the bigger the screen, the better. In fact, if you're on a Pro Max iPhone, try going to the regular Pro model for a bit. The majority of people will not like it. I certainly didn't. And of special note here is the added width of the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It really makes content consumption a joy, even more than the Samsung S22 Ultra that has a 6.8 inch screen in theory, but is just not as wide. Now coming to the display of the device, it's even brighter this year and thankfully I haven't come across any display anomalies. So the color temperature is fairly similar to its predecessor and there are no yellowing issues that I have encountered. The display in fact brings two remarkable upgrades this year, the always on display and the dynamic island. If you were to ask me to list three reasons to upgrade from last year's iPhone, then both of these would feature amongst the top three reasons. The always on display is something completely new to iPhone users, but something that the Android world has been enjoying for at least six or seven years now. It was inevitable that it came to the iPhone and it's great that it finally has. In fact, the implementation is better than most Android phones. It is basically a dimmed down lock screen. Lift to wake still works and the display wakes up when you lift it. However, even when sitting flat on a table, it usefully shows you the clock, the weather or any other widgets that you might choose to display along with any app notification that you may have received. I think it's just a case of getting used to this and once you do, you will find it very hard to go back to any old iPhone without this feature and a dumb black screen. The Dynamic Island is a smart solution to an ISO. It truly is a very remarkable feature of this phone and has great novelty value. In fact, it is the reason I swapped my main SIM card into this phone because each notification from incoming calls to Face ID to Apple Music is handled in a new fashion by the Dynamic Island. That is truly refreshing to see. It is Apple at its innovative best after a long while. And for users who seek out tangible new features, nothing comes close to this for the feel good factor. If you zoom in to 16 by 9 video, then the pill still comes in the way, perhaps more intrusively than the notch, but given all its smart and fun uses, otherwise all is forgiven. A quick note on the brightness here. Although outdoors the peak brightness is 2000 nits, up from 1200 nits, I struggle to notice the difference outdoors. It's great that it is brighter, but it's just that I never found the brightness of the 13 Pro Max limiting, and thus side by side, in actual fact, the difference was not almost twice as bright for the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It was just a continuation of a good thing. Of course, there are many outdoor uses such as using the phone when flying a drone that will benefit from the added brightness. But the point is that this should not be a reason for you to upgrade if you're on last year's flagship iPhone. If I had to describe the performance of the iPhone 14 Pro Max in a few words, I would say that it is snappier than the iPhone 13 Pro Max, but only marginally. That means that if you are happy with your 13 Pro Max, there's no reason to jump to the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Once again, this is not a reason to upgrade from last year's Pro iPhones. 
you can try and split hair here and say that it runs games better or cooler but it will be a case of trying to find that subtle improvement i mentioned in the unboxing video how apple compared the a16 to the a13 and not last year's a15 chip which goes to show how little of an improvement it would have been for apple not to mention it if you run benchmarks on either phone, you will see roughly an 11% improvement in single core and multi core performance for the A16 Bionic chip over the A15 Bionic. So, an improvement, but clearly not something that is earth shattering. In fact, by the time we see apps make use of the added performance potential, we may be getting close to the A16 chip anyway. The reason you should upgrade to this year's Pro iPhone Pro Max is the cameras. This is the most significant upgrade to the iPhone camera in years. Simply put, they have a lot more depth to them. Usually you can tweak the settings so that the camera always shoots in 48 megapixel mode instead of combining pixels into 12 MP photos. If you're in the habit of zooming into your photos, you love the 48 MP mode on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. There's certainly a lot more detail when you pinch to zoom. Unfortunately, when you're just looking at photos side by side on a small phone screen, you will not be able to tell the difference between 48 MP photos and 12 MP ones. You can just about tell the difference on a larger screen, but really the difference is only most apparent when zoomed in. But don't knock this just yet. This is very much the direction we should be going with phone cameras, now that we are reliant on them more and more as our main shooters. Other aspects see subtle improvements. So night photography is getting better, but at a slower pace. Video is better with cinematic mode now available in 4K and the new action mode with great stabilization at up to 2.7K resolution. You guys come up to here as well. Have you enjoyed my shows today, everybody? Yeah! Yeah, great. So, have you had a good time? Yeah! yeah! Okay. Um, I'm just going to say this before I do this. Thank you all so much for watching my show. Well, let it phase me it shouldn't phase you we're all in this together let's just enjoy them enjoy the journey you know perfect all right seven balls number one okay. hold on hold on dance is finished there we go nice one all right that went really well i'll give you guys the bonus trick today not every audience guess seven balls in the bag Really, there are no surprises here and the iPhone 14 Pro Max cameras are at their best this year with the biggest change in terms of resolution. If there was no other improvement this year with the iPhone, I would still buy the new iPhone just for these camera improvements. I think that single statement sums up just how much of an improvement we see in this regard. Battery life since the iPhone 12 Pro Max has been a strong suit for iPhones. In fact, last year's 6.1 inch iPhone 13 Pro got similar battery life to 2020's iPhone 12 Pro Max and the 13 Pro Max went even further. Well, nothing's changed this year apart from the very slightly smaller battery and the always on display. But happily, the added efficiency of the screen and SoC almost nullify any battery drain. The always on display only adds to around 5% extra drain of battery in a day. But since the Pro Max phones usually finish the day with 30-40% battery left anyway, you will not feel the pinch at all. In fact, even the iPhone 14 Pro is fine in this respect as my iPhone 13 Pro also used to finish the day with about 20% battery left. If you watch a lot of video or listen to music on your iPhone without earphones, then the iPhone 14 Pro Max offers a discernible improvement on the 13 Pro Max speakers. I didn't think this was the case initially, but if you compare them one after the other, the iPhone 13 Pro Max starts to feel tinier in comparison, and the bass on the iPhone 14 Pro Max is a lot more pronounced, and the sound coming out is more well-defined and surer for itself. In terms of decibels, the iPhone 14 Pro Max was 4 decibels louder at max volume versus the iPhone 13 Pro Max for the song I was playing. So it is a clear and noticeable difference between the two phones. Well done, Apple. 5G is gaining more and more relevance as time goes by. This December, Airtel is expected to roll out 5G in a number of Indian cities. Already in the US, UK and many parts of the world, they have seen widespread adoption of 5G, with even the fastest MM Wave 5G commonly available in the US. The modem inside the iPhone 14 Pro Max is supposed to be faster than last year's iPhones. 
the new phone uses Qualcomm's X65 modem, which is more power efficient for better battery life, as well as being the world's first 10 gigabit 5G modem for smartphones. So in theory, it's certainly better equipped to offer a faster and more stable connection. What I wanted to find out was how fast this was in practice in the real world. So I tested it under different conditions on two different networks in the UK, EE and 3, to see if we could see a discernible difference. And the results have been largely disappointing. Whilst I see faster download speeds from the App Store on the newer iPhone with Wi-Fi, the results on 5G were inconsistent. Let me just say that I could not find any noticeable improvement with the new phone. The problem here is that there are so many variables when it comes to 5G speeds that you will not get the same experience each time. 5G speeds appear to be more sensitive to distance from the cell towers and also being in the pocket seems to affect signal acquisition. So this will really only be of consequence to you if you're on anything older than the iPhone 13 series phones. In India, the phone now costs 1.5 lakh rupees in 256 GB form. This is 10,000 more than before, and the disparity between the different markets seems to be getting wider. This year, US iPhones have lost their SIM card slot, and for no good reason, as teardowns have revealed that there's just a plastic insert where the SIM tray would have been. In an ideal world, we would all be using eSIMs, and the experience would be seamless, but that is far from the reality. As an example, I have an Airtel eSIM from India in my iPhone 13 Pro Max, and there is no way to transfer it to another phone whilst I'm roaming. If you try and transfer it, the process just fails with an error message. Also, even when you are in your home country, often carriers impose temporary restrictions on things like text messaging to protect you from fraud in case the SIM transfer was done by someone unscrupulous but that ends up inconveniencing the user in a world where we are so dependent on OTPs for making payments. The point I'm trying to make here is that USA iPhones have just gone down big time in desirability for people who used to source them from that country and use them in markets where they are very expensive to buy. This year, in general, the costs of iPhones have gone up. Of course, affordability is a very personal subject and each person needs to make their own minds up about whether this year is the year that should be skipped in iPhone terms. Based on my experience with the iPhone 14 Pro Max, I'd like to make some easy recommendations this year. If you're on the iPhone 13 series phones, skip buying any of the iPhone 14 models this year, unless money is no object and you need to have the latest and greatest. If you need to justify to yourself the purchase, the three main reasons are the always-on display, the new 48 MP cameras, and perhaps the dynamic island for the novelty factor. If you're coming from anything older, you're seriously in for a treat, and the iPhone 14 Pro Max with its own improvements over the iPhone 13 Pro Max, when combined with that phone's improvements from last year, such as ProMotion 120Hz displays, will mean that your smartphone experience will be elevated manifold. It will indeed be a very satisfying upgrade. And you can choose any size of Pro iPhone and you will not lose out on any aspect apart from the screen size, not even battery life, as the smaller iPhone also offers great endurance. Hope you found this video useful and if you did, please consider subscribing to this channel. Do check out my other videos about the iPhone 14 series and thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.